hi 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 in this video we are going to revise accounting for llp that is limited liability partnership before going to the accounting part let me give a brief introduction about what is llp limited liability partnership what do you mean by limited liability what do you mean by unlimited liability listen sole proprietor and a partnership are there no they are their liability is unlimited what do you mean by that sir what do you mean by that if if at all firms asset if at all firms assets are not enough to meet the liabilities of the firm i repeat if the firms asset assets are not enough to meet the liabilities of the firm then to the portion to the portion of a unpaid liability the partners or a proprietor should bring their personal asset to pay back that particular liability let us assume your firm is having 10 lakh rupees of liability your firm is having a asset of 6 lakh rupees for the 4 lakh rupees which is unpaid now for the 4 lakh rupees which is unpaid you have to bring from your personal asset in your home the money will be there no that you have to bring your wife jeweler your home everything that is unlimited liability whereas your liability is not limited only to the extent of what is available in the business your liability will be to the extent of what is available even with your personal uh, assets what is available as your personal assets so people started you know getting scared of entering into business because of this but yes then the company was there then the company was there which was liability was unlimited that is your liability will be limited only to the extent of share capital which is unpaid so only to the extent of your total share capital is your liability more than that no liability only how much you have to pay to shares only that much is your liability not more than that but there was you know huge procedures to form the company after forming a company huge procedures right even llp they didn't make it that simplified but still when compared to the company running a llp the legal obligations of llp is less statutory obligation of llp is less than what it is there in the company so people thought you know we can't start the company because lot of lot of lot of statutory restriction whereas we can't start it this is i'm talking in as per the company act 1956 this is back in the days 2008 so you can't start even a sole proprietor or partnership because you are scared what if we get loss we have to bring from our own money right so that time government came up with some new kind of entity which is called limited liability partnership partnership business only but the liability is limited partnership business only but the liability is limited okay what do you mean by mini, uh, limited, li uh, limited liability partnership, sir? That is LLP. Limited liability partnership is a specific form of business organization consisting of partners whose liability is limited to the capital contribution made by them. So, how much is the liability of the partners? Maximum extent of capital contributed by them, just like a company. Okay. It is a combination of both the partnership and the company and has the characteristics of both firms and the company. Unlike the partnership, the partners of a LLP have a limited liability which implies that personal asset of the partners will not be used for paying off the debts of the organization. Okay. So when the LLP Act came in India, LLPs are governed by LLP Act. Okay. In India, LLPs are governed, that is limited liability partners are governed as per Limited Liability Partnership Act 2008, which came into existence from 1st April 20, 2009, Fool's Day. 1st April 2009, it came into existence. It came into existence. So, it might be a MCQ question or a fill in the blanks question or match the following question also. So, the as there is a law for this particular LLP, as there is a separate law for this particular LLP, Partnership Act 1932 is not applicable for this. What are the features? LLP is a body corporate, which means it has its own legal existence. Okay. It is formed and incorporated under LLP Act 2008. 
any individual or body corporate may be a partner in LLP. LLP there is no restriction that only individual can be a partner. No, of course, there is a restriction that at least two individuals should be there. But it is not something like only individual can form a partnership. No, individual as well as body corporate can form a LLP. Okay, to become a partner in the LLP, you need not to be an individual only. Even a body corporate like companies can be a partner in LLP. Okay. Every LLP shall have at least two partners. As partnership only, LLP also should have at least two partners. Every LLP shall have at least two designated partners who are individuals. That's why I told you, at least two individuals are necessary. After that, you can appoint how many uh, body corporate you want as a partners. So, what this point says, your LLP should have two designated partners. How many partners you might be having? At least two should be designated partners. And those two should be the people who are individual. Those two partners should be individual. Body, body, body corporates cannot be a, your uh, designated partners. Okay. Body corporate cannot become your designated partners. Only individual can become your designated partners. And out of the two, at least one should be resident of India. Out of those two designated partners, at least one should be resident in India. So, every LLP shall have either the word limited liability partnership or the acronym LLP at its last word of its name. Just like the company which is having limited as well as private limited, same way if it's a LLP, you have to put it as a LLP at the end of your name. Books of accounts. As per section 34 of LLP Act, each and every LLP should maintain the books. Each and every LLP should maintain the books. Okay, just like company, sir. Yes, just like company. But in the company, you have to maintain your books as per accrual system. You have to maintain your book as per accrual system. That is mercantile system. But as per LLP Act, you have to maintain the books. There is no restriction that you have to maintain in accrual business, accrual basis. You can maintain it in cash basis or accrual basis. Okay. So, you can maintain it in accrual basis or a cash basis, your wish. But double entry should be there and, and, and it should be available or the book should be kept in the registered office. Okay. Also, also as per section 36 of the LLP Act, all the LLPs should, should prepare a statement of account and statement of solvency should prepare the statement of account and a statement of solvency within six months from the end of the financial year. For example, if your financial year at 2000, your financial year is 2021-22, within the end of six month, that is April, May, June, July, August, September, within 30th of September 2022, you should prepare a statement of account and a insolvency. You should prepare a statement of account and a insolvency. What are the things will be there in the statement of account, sir? The things will be there in the statement of account, sir. Statement of assets and liabilities, statement of income expenditure. Basically, your balance sheet and PNL. Balance sheet and a PNL. Okay. Okay. Done. And 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 you have to file it. You have you have to file this statement of accountancy and sol statement of account and solvency with the registrar within 30 days from the end of this period. Within 30 days from the end of six months from the date of financial year, you have to file it. Which means within 30th October, you have to file it with the registrar in form number eight. Form number eight. This is as per which sir? This is as per rule 24 sub 24 3. Rule 24 3. Every LLP shall file the statement of account and solvency in form 8 with the registrar within a period of 30 days from the end of 6 month from the 6 month of the financial year to which the statement of accounts and solvency relates. Okay. Fine. How the statement of assets and liability look like? Same like a company but yes, there are certain variations. In company, we call it as share capital and equity, share capital and equity, uh, sorry, equity and liabilities. Here, we don't call it as equity. Here, we call it as contribution 
and liabilities contribution and liabilities in the contribution the first one is partners fund partners fund is just like your shareholders fund what are the things will be there capital plus any uh, reserves general reserves kind of thing surplus etc so partners fund contribution received that is capital plus reserves and surplus including surplus being the profit or loss made during the year that is pnl balance liabilities in company we used to divide liabilities into two unsecured and a secured uh, sorry non current and a current and in that non current and current again secured unsecured all those things here it is not there in the liabilities first we are going to write a uh, secured loans later unsecured loans later if there is any short term borrowings that one later if there is any creditors trade payables etc any other liabilities are there any other liabilities if you have to specify those liabilities provisions again in company we used to do non current provisions in the non current liabilities and the current provisions in the current liabilities i mean short term and long term so here provisions together like provisions for taxation contingency insurance other provision if any you are going to give it this is liability asset when it comes to the asset you are going to show the gross fixed asset there we used to show non current asset and current asset in non current asset ppe investment etc 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 here that is not there gross fixed asset less depreciation and amortization if any provision is maintained net fixed asset you are going to get investment loans and advances if you have given any loans and advances to someone inventories debtors or trade receivables cash and cash equivalent amount of other asset any other asset which you want to specify if there is any contingent liability we have to show it like this okay you have to show this you have to make a separate statement for that statement of pnl in company what we used to do in company we used to take revenue from operation other income total income minus all the expenses that is profit before tax and extraordinary and extraordinary items etc 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 we used to do no same kind only but bit different here also vertical only income we are going to take the gross turnover from gross turnover if you have collected any sales tax that is taxes if you have collected any which you want to pay to the government that you are going to reduce you are going to find out the net turnover which is relating to your sales right that net turnover you are going to divide into two domestic turnover and turnover through export in domestic turnover also through sales of goods and through provision of service also how much through the manufactured how much through the traded goods and how much through the service goods again traded how much manufactured how much that way see here turnover domestic turnover sale of goods manufactured sale of goods traded sale or supply of service again export turnover sale of goods manufactured sale of goods traded sale of sale or supply of service if any other income is there that we are going to do and also increase or decrease in the stock listen in the company increase or decrease in the stock is taken in the expense side that's why what we used to do we used to do opening stock minus closing stock opening stock minus closing stock but here in the given llp statement we are going to show the changes in the asset sorry changes in your stock raw material it might be wip or finished goods anything changes in the stock that is opening stock minus closing stock we are going to show it in the income only so we know that closing stock is more more profit which means closing stock you can consider it as income no you are showing it in the income side that is credit side so closing stock more means more income opening stock more means more expense so there we used to do opening minus closing here we are going to do closing stock minus opening stock in the llp we are going to take the changes in the stock in the income side itself and that to closing stock minus opening stock and there we are going to show the certain expenditure like raw material consumed purchase made for resale consumption of stores and spares powers and fuel personal expenditure that is your employee admin expenditure payment to auditor selling expense insurance expense depreciation amortization interest that is your finance charges other expenses total expenditure you will get from that total expenditure that is if you deduct a total income out of that to from that total expenditure or sorry if you deduct total expenditure from the total income which was available after adjustment of the stock you are going to get net profit or loss before tax right from that if you deducted tax provision for tax 
you are going to get profit after tax. Later, this profit you can transfer either to reserves or either to partners capital or both. That is, you are going to appropriate those profit. Okay, sir. What if we don't maintain the books? What if we don't maintain the books? As per the LLP Act, if you don't maintain the books, your firm is liable for fine of 25,000, minimum 25,000, which might extend till 5 lakh rupees, which might extend till 5 lakh rupees. At the same point of time, your designated partners shall be liable for the fine of 10,000 rupees, which might extend till 1 lakh rupees. Okay. Annual report, same, same fine amount. If you fail to uh, file the annual re return, your firm is liable for 25,000 rupees, which might extend for 5 lakh rupees and your designated partners, every designated partners, not the partners in default, every designated partners are liable to pay 10,000 rupees, at least 10,000 rupees, which might extend to 1 lakh rupees. Okay. Next is audit of books. Audit of books, your LLP books, you should get audited by the practicing chartered accountant. Your LLP, you should get, the books of accounts of LLP should get audited by the practicing chartered accountant. That's it. That's the end of LLP. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you had, please share with your friends and please like the video. Thank you. Bye-bye.